Hi, in today's video, I want to talk to you about two common forms of treatment that are used in trying to treat myopia control. I'm going to talk about which one of them has better results, but then I'm also going to tell you a third alternative treatment to myopia control. Now, before I go into that, if you're local, give us a call at 618-288-1489. If you're not local, it's okay. You can still contact us <laughs> and we encourage you to do so. Go to our website at visionforlifeworks.com. You can do a couple of things there. One, obviously look through the website. Two, you can schedule a consultation if you know you're ready for that next step. If you're not ready for that next step, however, you can fill out a questionnaire. Now what that questionnaire will do is it will allow you to get access to some of our back information, maybe get on our regular email system, and you can learn more about our treatment program and what we do at our clinic. Let's go into those two different forms of myopia control that I mentioned. Now, these are two that are commonly used around throughout the world. Um, one of them is a new contact lens that has been developed by a company called Cooper Vision. It's called MySight. And MySight, if you go and look up their information, boasts that it will reduce myopia progression by about 59% over the course of a year. It is typically used in patients who are in the age range of 8 to 12 years of age. And it also says that it will reduce the axial length, which is the elongation of the eyeball itself that progresses whenever a person gets a stronger lens prescription each year in, and becomes more and more myopic. So that progression of the axial length, they say, will reduce by 52%. Now, that's awesome. That's actually a really good amount. That certainly is definitely something to, you know, boast about. If all we want to do is slow down the progression of the myopia. Here's the second form of treatment that is slowing down the progression of myopia, which is low dose atropine. I did do a video talking about atropine a while back where I went through and discussed atropine use in cases of trying to help one individual or an individual who maybe has amblyopia where one eye doesn't see quite as well. And a doctor might prescribe drops to blur out the better seeing eye used over a period of weeks to months. What it does is it paralyzes the focusing muscle inside and around the eye so that the eye is not able to focus, thereby blurring that better seen eye and forcing the brain to have to use the eye that's a little weaker in its eyesight. Now, we also see that there are doctors that use atropine, not just for amblyopia treatment, but for myopia control. Well, what does atropine boast in terms of its improvement? So it says that it will slow the rate of myopic progression between 30 to 50%. Again, that's not a bad thing necessarily to, you know, that's a pretty good reduction. But if we're only looking at like slowing the progression of it, so over the span of a year, what we would typically see in myopia, how much it grows or increases over the span of the year. And if we're looking at that and we're saying, well, let's see, 50%, let's just average for both of them, a 50% reduction. So instead of it progressing by 0.37 of a diopter in power in a year, 50% of that, so okay, not bad. You're still going to see a slight increase in myopia at the end of the year. The tricky part is, is that lens prescriptions sometimes are not as exact down to a 0.12 measurement. So if you have that kind of a progression, you're still likely to see that the doctor will go, you were a minus five before and you're a minus 5.12 now, but let's bump you to a 5.25. So even if you have that lesser amount of progression because you're doing something that reduces the normal progression in a year, 50%, and it's maybe say around a 0.2 progression, one, two progression instead of a 0.37. Well, again, the doctor's not likely to prescribe 0.12, so they're more likely to bump that up to a quarter. So is that really a huge benefit? Again, yeah, maybe if we're looking in terms of the axial length of the eye progressing at a certain volume or amount per year also, and that can be reduced in its progression. 
But I'm going to challenge your thoughts on that today because I'm going to say, well, you know, well, what if we're actually using syntonics and traditional vision therapy types of techniques, but a specified program for specifically reducing, not only um, just slowing the progression, but reducing and backtracking on the lens prescription. So that if a person has a minus five, what if we're saying we're reducing that by 30 to 50%, not halting a progression by 30 to 50%. So in other words, you're a minus five, uh, we kept you at a minus five or 5.25 because we slow the progression. No, what I'm saying is what if this, and again, traditional vision therapy added with it, actually allows for a person to go from a minus five down to a minus 2.5 in one year. Or if a 30% reduction, it wouldn't be quite as much, but that's about a 50% reduction, obviously. Half of five would be 2.5. So what if that program then is able to not just slow a progression, but reduce it by 30 to 50, 50%, take it backwards, and then stabilize it so that it doesn't continue to progress? Well, what if that program, said program, also has the ability to reduce the axial length that has gotten longer or grown out of control and reducing it back to something less? So see, that's what our program does actually. And so we work with patients every day. We have hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of patients that we work with. Every patient that walks in the door actually, or comes across the web is a patient who is going through our reduction um, in their lens prescription. So it is a very specific program. There is a very specific uh, amount of lenses in a specified order that are used in order to achieve this reduction of 30 to 50% in myopia and also a reduction in the axial length. And we actually have patients who are proving now because they're getting the tests ran to show that their axial length was this before, now the axial length is this. I've known for years that in order to take someone, our highest lens prescription was a minus um, 14, and we took them down to a minus six, I think. It was either a six or a five. It's been a while, so I've forgotten that. But either way, a six or a five is more than 50% of a reduction in myopia that we did in the span of about a year. It was really about 14 months. And that was our largest lens prescription reduction that we've ever been able to accomplish. We also took someone who was in that minus nine range and got them back into a minus six range. So we've had a lot of success in reducing our patients and that's not even just discussing astigmatism. But in order to take someone from like a minus 14 range and get them down to where they're in like a minus five or a minus six and seeing the same as what they saw when they were a minus 14, so let's just say, for instance, at minus 14, that individual is only able to see 20, 30. And we reduce their lens power down to a minus six or a minus five, and they're still seeing 20, 30. Well, we reduced a whole lot of lens prescription. They're seeing the same. In order to reduce that large voluminous amount of lens prescription, we have had to have reduced the axial length. The problem is in the past, most of our patients haven't really gone out and let me go get an ultrasound. It's called a, um, a specific type of an ultrasound on the eye that measures the axial length. You know, let me just go out and get an ultrasound every few months to prove this is happening. Because for the most part, our patients don't really care. If they're having a reduction in their myopia, they don't really care if they're proving that the axial length is less. It actually has to be less in order to keep the image at the back of the eye and for them to see just as well with that minus five or six lens as opposed to the minus 14. The axial length has to be reducing. So now that we actually have, you know, a case out there where we're proving it really does reduce. We've said it was reducing, but now we can prove it. Well, do we really want to just halt the progression by 30 to 50%? Or do we want to actually reduce it, not halt it, reduce it, and then halt it at a reduced level of myopia? 
That's up to you to make the call on what you want to do. If you're interested in learning more about our program and how we do this on a regular basis with our patients, give us a call if you're local at 618-288-1489. If you're not local, go to our website at visionforlifeworks.com. Once again, you have the option. You can fill out a questionnaire and get some feedback, maybe get on our emailing system to learn more about us. Or if you are ready just to take that next step, schedule a consultation with us by clicking the button. Now, uh, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel. And as always, if this would be beneficial to someone else, please pass this video on. Thank you.